Hello, this is Eric Ford. I'd like to give you a quick primer on developing a survey and checking to see if the items, meaning the questions, in your survey are actually hanging together and only testing or asking people about one construct. A construct is a theoretical uh, feature where we think all of the items are loading onto one, what we would call factor in a statistical sense. If we want to measure people's satisfaction, we might ask them what they thought about the temperature of the room, the color of the walls, the carpet, those sorts of things. But that may not play into satisfaction directly. That may be more their opinion of how they think the space looked or cleanliness or some other thing that may or may not be satisfaction. So when we have scales, we like to check them. And that's what I'm going to do here. I've got a scale here in an Excel spreadsheet. This is 40 responses to five Likert type items. These are on a scale of, it looks like, one to five. On uh, attitude to primary care program funded by the State Department of Health Services. This was actually a survey of uh, employees. So what is it we were asking the employees? Did it improve their motivation? Did it have an impact on their job? Improvement on quality of services? improvement of appropriateness of services, and did it have a positive impact on the department? I think we had all of these scaled positively. In other words, where five meant yes, it was very strongly related to my motivation, whereas one would be no, it was negatively, very negatively associated with my motivation for this first item. So what are we going to do? Well, the first thing I do is scale the items. And when I do that, I want to add them. I'm creating a some what's called a summated scale. And I'm just adding across the row here. I've already done it, but this should be fairly simple. And I just take in these five items and sum them up, and we see it here. And so to check and see if all of these items belong in the scale, what I can do is I can go from to the data page. These are the add-ins, these analysis tools. I can click on here. And I want to see if they're correlated, if the items correlate with one another and with the scale. So I click on that and you can see a couple features here in the little pop-up box. The first is labels in first row and yes I do have labels in the first row. In this case it's row three. And I'm going to click yes and then here you can see grouped by columns. That means the items or individual questions are in the columns. You want to put yes for that. And it's already picked it up because I did a practice round on this. But you can come here and highlight. And by the way, you want to start your highlighting here. I don't want this statement number. This is actually, uh, these are the respondents. If I pick that up, that causes a little problem in my analysis. It doesn't actually change the correlations, but it messes up the reading. So I pick those up, and I want to output it. And I'm just going to output it to the upper right here. And that's this L4 number. I'm going to go OK. And there you have it. So here's my scales. And I can see that the question about motivation is perfectly correlated with itself. That's what 1 means. Uh, correlations run from 0 to 1, with 1 being positively correlated. Uh, actually runs from 1 to negative 1, if you want to look at it this way. Because motivation is negatively correlated to impact on the job, etc. If I look at the five items, and their relationship to the scale, I can see that motivation has a correlation of 0.13, impact on the job 0.72, uh, improvement on my job's quality 0.397, appropriateness of care 0.7, and impact on the department 0 0.766, 0 0.77. Uh, so these are the ones with 0.7s. Those are fairly strong correlations. 0.4 may or may not be okay. We'll have to find out. But it seems pretty clear that motivation is not strongly correlated with the scale. So in that instance, what I'm going to do is create a new scale. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go ahead and copy paste the sheet here into a new sheet. And I'm Eliminating a couple steps, I assume you can copy and paste. And I'm excluding the item motivation. Uh, you want me to rerun it? I'll go ahead and rerun this one more time. 
I'm going to rerun the correlation. And this time, I am going to pick up this first row. I didn't keep it the count sheet. I'm going to highlight it. And I'm going to make my labels and first rows, columns again. I'll make my output row right here. And I'll go OK. You see I've done this a few times. And now when I get to it, I see that another one of my items, notice what's happening here, that some of my items are getting much stronger correlations. Now, when I've taken out the confounding influence of motivation, impact on the job, appropriateness, and uh, impact on the department are now all above 0.8. These are becoming fairly strong correlations. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this other item out because I think what's happening here, see improvement on quality, is I've really got two constructs within this scale of five items. And so what I want to do is get my scale down to one construct. I go over to sheet three where I've now copied my items. And again, now I'm down to just three items, the three that I think are forming one construct. I rerun the, the correlation, and now you see I'm getting very, very strong items. And I do believe that this is, in fact, one construct. So I would tell you that these three items are one construct. The other thing I'm going to do is then go back, and I've rerun this a few times, and I'll be happy to send you this sheet as well is go back and check if the other two items are in fact a scale and they're right. All right, that ought to give you a pretty good idea how to check using simple correlations whether or not a survey is measuring one, two, or three constructs. I should mention there are far more sophisticated statistical techniques, including factor analysis, that can be used to do this. Um, there's even more structural equation modeling that's really the gold standard. You can do this a number of ways, and you should go out and check these. In other words, this isn't the be-all, end-all, but it gives you a starting point to see if you're really measuring what you say you are. So I'll stop there, post this to YouTube. If you have any questions, please let me know.